In this lesson, you will learn to graph linear inequalities and systems of inequalities. Now when you graph a linear inequality, you're going to graph the same way that you would an equation. The only difference is with the line, we're going to have either a dotted line or a solid line. And then we're also going to be shading in either above or below that line. So for example, here we have y is less than negative x plus 1. Now when you begin graphing an inequality, you're going to start out the same way as graphing an equation. So we know how to graph y equals negative x plus 1, because negative 1 would be your slope. This is the number with the x. So negative 1 is your slope. Your y-intercept would be the 1, the plus 1. And so when I graph this, graphing the equation, I know that because my y-intercept is 1, I can go up 1 to find 1 point and the slope is negative 1. So if I use the fact that this is rise over run, I can see that uh, negative 1 would be the same thing as negative 1 over 1. So rise would be negative 1, so down 1 from that point, and the run is positive 1, so I go to the right 1. So from this point, I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 1 to get that point right there. And now I'm going to draw the line. And then because it is less than, less than means the numbers will be smaller. So it's saying y is smaller than this line right here. So where does y get smaller? Well y gets smaller as it goes down lower on this y-axis. So when it says y is less than negative x plus 1, I'm going to shade in everywhere where y is smaller than this line. Well, where is y smaller than the line? It's going to be below. So I'm going to shade in everything below. So the shading is the one part that is going to be different with an inequality. The other part is the fact that with less than or greater than, that does not actually include the line itself. So notice how this line is dotted. It's kind of hard to tell maybe on this screen, but this is a dotted line. And it's dotted to represent the fact that this inequality does not include the line. So if it were less than or equal to, it would be a solid line because it could be equal to that line. But because it's not, it's just less than, it's going to be a dotted line. So if it is greater than or less than, that would be a dotted line because it's not equal to that line. And that's kind of analogous to uh, when you graph with one variable. Because when you graph with one variable, say you had x is greater than 4, it does not include 4, so it would be like an open circle at 4. So the open circle, when you graph on a number line, is analogous to the dotted line here with greater than or less than. And then if you have the equal sign included, then it's going to be a solid line. And that's analogous to the same thing with one variable, where with one variable, if it was x is greater than or equal to 4, for example, because it has an equal sign as part of it, it's going to be a closed circle. So there is um, there is comparison to one variable and two variables, and this might help you with remembering when to use the dotted and when to use the solid. And the other difference is going to be the shading. So how do you know when to shade below or above? Well, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, it's going to be shading in above because the numbers are bigger above the line. And that's kind of analogous to shading into the right with a one variable. So if it was like x, you know, if x is greater than um, 3, it's going to be open circle shading into the right. Well, the shading into the right is analogous to shading above for the greater than. And then if it's less than or less than or equal to, then you would shade below, like we see in this example. And that's analogous to shading into the left with one variable. If you had just x is less than or equal to 3, then be a closed circle shade into the left.
Okay, so there is comparison with one and two variables, and that is maybe a way that you can remember when to use which. Let's look at some other examples just to make sure that we understand. Here is one, same e inequality. The only difference is instead of less than, we have a greater than sign. So the graph will be the same. It's going to be a dotted line because it's just greater than, not greater than or equal to. And then in this case, you're going to be shading in above because of the greater than sign. Okay, and then using the same inequality again, I'm going to skip over the graphing of the line because we know how to get to that point. But notice, because of the equal sign as part of this inequality, it's going to be a solid line right here. So a solid line because it's got the equal sign, and then you're going to shade in below because it is less than. So we'd have that graph right there. And then if it was greater than or equal to, same inequality, just the, uh, the symbol is changed. So the line will still be the same. Notice it's solid line because of the equal sign as part of the inequality. And then the greater than means I'm going to shade in above that line. So my graph would look like this. Now here's another example. And here we have y is greater than or equal to 2. And once again, we can begin graphing this the same way that we'd graph an equation. So how would we graph y equals 2? Well, remember, when it's y equals, we first off could think of this as y equals 0x plus 2, where this may be easier to see the fact that there is an x component, but uh, it's not written. It's an assumed 0, because there is no x written. And what we have here is the slope is going to be 0, and the y-intercept would be 2. So when you graph this, you're going to go up 2 to the y-intercept, and the slope is 0, meaning it's going to be a horizontal line. Okay, And if you don't want to think through it that way, that's fine. You could just look at the fact you have y equals 2, and realize that no matter what x is equal to, y would always be 2. x could be 1, x could be 0, x could be you know, whatever y would always be 2, which would create this horizontal line. Either way, we get the same line. And now we need to determine is it going to be a solid line or a dotted line. And then where do we shade? So because it has the equal component, it's a greater than or equal to sign, it's going to be a solid line. And then the shading would be above because it is greater than. y is bigger up higher on the graph. So we're going to shade in above that line. Now if we have the same inequality, just change it to a less than or equal to. You're going to the same line, and then instead you're going to shade in below because it is less than or equal to. y is smaller as you go down the graph. Same inequality, just with a less than sign instead of the equal component. So we have the same line. The only difference is it's going to be a dotted line. And it may be difficult to see on the slide, but that's a dotted line. And the shading is less than, so it's going to be below. And that would be your graph. And then if it were y is greater than 2, once again, a dotted line at 2, because of it just being a greater than sign, there's no equal component. And the shading would be above that line because it is greater than. Another example that is similar to the previous example would be x is less than 4. So here instead of y you have an x. And the concept is still the same where I can think of this to begin, to begin graphing think of this as x equals 4. Because if x is equal to 4 we know how to graph that. It's not in slope intercept form and there is really no slope, uh, nothing with the x term, and it's kind of a weird one, but uh, the concept is if we have two points, we can graph the line, and here, if x is 4, the question is, what is y equal to? Well, y can be anything, right? y can be, uh, if x were 4, y could be 2. If x were 4, y can be 0. It doesn't matter what y is equal to, x will always be 4. 
So when I graph this, I have points that I can plug in. I have four, two, or I have four, zero. Four, comma, anything would be a point on the line. So if I were to graph that, it'd be over four, one, two, three, four, up zero, and then four, up two. Notice we have a vertical line there at four. My line is vertical. That's gonna be where I begin. And the question is gonna be, do I have a dotted or a solid line? And then do I shade, I guess where do I shade in this one? Well, because it is less than and not less than or equal to, it's gonna be a dotted line. So if we're less than or equal to, it'd be a solid line. Now the shading for this one is a little different because we're not gonna shade in above or below because you cannot shade above or below, right? So the only parts we have is gonna to be to the left or to the right to shade in. Well, where is x smaller than four? Well, if x were three, that, well, that's smaller than four. If x is two, that's smaller than four. Anything to the left of this line would be smaller than four. So my shading would be over here on the left. Now if our x is greater than four, it'd be the dotted line still there at four. But here, because it's greater than, we'd shade into the right. Because those numbers to the right is where x are bigger. And then if you had the equal component, so less than or equal to, it'd be a solid line at four, and then less than would be shading to the left. And then if you had x is greater than or equal to four, it's gonna be a solid line again, because it has an equal sign. So a solid line at four, and then shading to the right, because it is greater than. Now lastly, I'd like to finish with showing you how to graph a system of inequalities meaning if you had more than one equality at the same time, such as this example, how would you graph that? Well, the concept is basically, you're just gonna shade in where the graphs overlap. So I'm gonna shade in, or graph each part separately, and then see where do, do the shading overlap. Well, if I were to graph the first one, y is greater than negative x plus two, well, as far as graphing that one goes, think of that as y equals negative x plus two. And then for that equation, we know the slope would be negative one, right? There's no assumed one there with the x. And then your y-intercept would be that two. So to graph that one, my y-intercept is two, so I'm gonna go up two. And my slope is negative one, so slope is rise over run. So we have negative one or negative one over one. So the rise is down one, the run is to the right one. And I get that second point right there. And then it's gonna be a dotted line because it is just a greater than sign. And the shading for this one would be above that line. So anything up here would be where I shade in. Because up here is where y is bigger. Y is bigger above that line. And then the second inequality, we have y is less than or equal to x plus two. So that one, as far as the line goes, I can think of that as y equals x plus two, because that I know how to graph. The slope is gonna be an assumed one, and the y-intercept is gonna be the two. And slope is a rise over run, so we have one over one. So to graph this one, y-intercept is two, so we go up two to this point that we already have right here. And then the slope is one, so I'm gonna go up one and to the right one to get that point right there. I connect the two dots and I get this line and it's gonna be solid because it has the equal sign as part of the inequality. Now the graphing for this one would be below that line because it has a less than sign. So below this line that we just created would be down here, here in yellow. So notice where these two graphs overlap. They overlap where you see the red and the yellow both being shaded in, which would be right in that area. So my solution would just be this right here. I don't need the red and the yellow over here on the side. It's just what I have here with that yellow triangle. 
that would be your solution. Now I'm going to add one more uh, level of difficulty to this, where now I have three inequalities. And the question is, how do you graph these three? So the only thing different here in this example is we added in this third inequality. These first two inequalities are the same as a previous example. So I'm just going to jump to the last one. We know how to graph the first two. So the first one here, uh, we had a shade in um, above, because it's greater than. So we shade in up here. And then the second inequality, you're going to shade in below which we already said would be down here. And then we also have this third one now, where x is less than or equal to 4. While x is less than or equal to 4, that would be comparable to x is equal to 4. And x is equal to 4 would be a vertical line here at 4. So we see right here this vertical line at 4. And it's a solid line because it has an equal sign as part of it. Now where is x less than or equal to 4? Well, x is smaller to the left of that line. So anything to the left of that line would be a solution for that part. So over here, anything to the left would be part of my solution. So in all of this mess, notice where they overlap, where the red, yellow, and green are. It's going to be right in this area right there. So right here in this yellow triangle is where all three overlap. So keeping those three lines in there, you're going to shade in just this portion in the yellow. So you can erase everything else. Nothing else is needed for this graph. So your final solution would look just like this right there. And that concludes our lesson for today. And we will see you next time.